Now that we've synchronized animations, we can run the game. Once again, I have the game running on another machine, so we just need to join the game. Now let's take our trip across the island to visit the other player. This time, because the animations are synchronized, when we move the other player, we'll be able to see the proper walking, jumping, running, etc. Alright, there's our other player. I'm going to go to the other machine now and we'll see what happens. Okay, there we see the player walking forward, turning around, walking backwards, jumping, and running. So, we've successfully synchronized our animations in addition to our skins and our meshes. Now, this has been for legacy animations. There's a whole nother kind of animation, the new Mechanum system. What about it? Well, you can use pretty much the same strategy, except instead of synchronizing the specific components for the animations, you just synchronize the components that get fed into the Mechanum state machine. So let's take a look at that. All right, let's take a look at Mechanum. So I've taken the generic construction worker and I've imported it as a Mechanum character. If we come back just down a bit, I can show you here. This is the Mechanim character with no hat, and this is the Mechanim character with the hat. If we look at the rig, you see it's a generic as opposed to a legacy. And if we look at the model, you can see that it's just imported exactly the same. And if we look at the animations, say we pick the idle animation. So let's make this a bit larger. We can play the idle animation. Any of the animations, really. Alright, so the work of converting this character from a legacy character to a mechanism character was pretty trivial. I simply rotated it 90 degrees and imported it using the mechanism importer. It was as simple as that. Now, the other thing I needed to do was I needed to create a controller. If we take a look at the controller, it's pretty straightforward. I have the idle state. I have transitions to and from the walk state, and I have transitions to and from the run state. I haven't done the jump, but adding the jump would be pretty straightforward as well. Now, the state machine is driven by one variable right now, just the speed. We're just passing the speed into the state machine, and the different speed values are causing these transitions to occur in the animation. If we just take a look at this, you can see that this transition is occurring from run to walk. This one as well. And these are between idle and walk. And they're really just based on speed. As the character speeds up, he either walks or runs. And when he goes from nothing to 0.1, he's walking. And when he goes greater than 4.1, he's running. Pretty straightforward, very simple way to do animations with Mechanim. It's a really great system. So once these were imported, it was just a matter of creating controllers for them as well. Now, I duplicated the controller script that was being used on the legacy animator. And I just took that animation section out and replaced it with the animation section for a mechanism controller. So why don't we take a look at what that looks like. I simply took the third person controller and made a mechanism variant of it. And I changed the animation section. So this is the animation section when you're using mechanism. As you can see, we simply pass in that float value speed. We don't have any if statements. We don't have any control of the animation state machine. All of that is handled by Mechanim. We just pass one value in and Mechanim does everything else. So how are we synchronizing this? Well, let's take a look at the serialize function. So all we're doing is synchronizing the one value, the move speed. If we own the player, we're sending the move speed to the other players. If we don't own the player, we're receiving the move speed. It really is that simple. And because we're using on serialize, it's being updated for us automatically. Now, when I was doing the setup for the Mechanum character, I had to do the same thing in Network Player Setup, where I had the third person controller. You notice here this is a Mechanum controller, and initially I was destroying it, but I've commented those lines out for both the Mechanum controller and the standard controller. So now the Network Player Setup script isn't destroying the controller script, and it's going to run on the Mechanum main character and on the Mechanim Ghost character. Again, this is identical to what was done with the legacy third-person controller. So let's go back to Unity. And now let's change our spawn point characters so that instead of using our legacy ones, we're using our Mechanim ones. 
So here's our constructor mechanism, and we're going to put that in as the first character. And here's our constructor no hat mechanism, and we're going to put that in as our second character. Now let's run the game. First, I'm just going to host the game just to show you that it is the mechanism character. Okay, so you can see it here. And you can see this is definitely the mechanism character. And here's the network view, and you can see it's synchronizing the same things. All right, so let me move this character around just a bit. So you can see the animation running up here as well. So you can see it making the transitions. Let me just make a transition to run. There you go, you can see run going up there in the controller window. So this is definitely a mechanism character. So now we need to look at it when we join a network game. So let's stop running this and let's fire this up on our second machine and see what happens when we join the network game. Okay, so it's up and running on the other game, on the other machine, so let's join that game now. Now, I made the change on the other machine as well so that it is also using the mechanism character. Once again, we have to make our little trip across the island. Okay, and there's our other mechanism character. So we have them both. You can see the animations running up here, both running their idle animation. All right, so now I'm going to go over to the other machine and I'm going to move the other character around. And as you can see, it's also making its transitions between the different mechanism animations. Okay, so I just want to mention one more time the difference between using on serialize versus using RPCs to send information. In both of these cases, I've used on serialize. It's convenient, but it does send a lot more information across the network. What we could do instead, both for mechanism and for legacy animations, is have a little bit of program logic that looks for those transitions in the case of mechanism that looks for when the speed changes across the thresholds. And when those threshold changes are met, we could send just a single RPC to the other machine, and then it could inject the new value into the state machine. So there's room for optimization here, but in terms of the concept of what information gets sent across the network, it's the same. The only difference is how frequently that information may get sent across the network. Either way, a synchronizing animation across the network is really quite easy.